I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back, no, I will go, I shall go to see what the end is going to be. Um, welcome everyone today and thank you for joining us today in this really nice afternoon. Um, today we're going to have a very short webinar on African American History Month. Uh, and this webinar is brought by Centro Cultural Nicaraguense North Americano through uh, its program, American Spaces. Um, I hope that you guys learned um, a bit more about African American History Month, why we celebrate this, um, and what are the implications of having um, this commemoration um, every year in the United States of America. Um, all right, so I would like to start first sharing a little bit about what African American History Month is about. Um, and basically what it is, is that every year in the United States of America, um, all Americans have a national observance in which, uh, which takes place every February um, of every year. And this is basically to celebrate the contributions and all the achievements of African Americans. Um, in addition, these observance give Americans the space to reflect on the resilience and the legacies of African Americans experiences that trace more than 400 years of black history and heritage, especially because uh, we all know that African Americans um, endure a long history of segregation and collective punishment uh, and neglect. Uh, but actually this observance became uh, official um, has, it was established until 1976 when the U.S. President Gerald Ford um, called for a recognition of the neglect accomplishments of all African Americans in every area of society and U.S. history. Uh, we now see a lot of African Americans that have succeeded and have contributed um, in science, art, sports, politics, and so on. And this is a great space to do that, uh, to remember all the great work that they have done and also to reflect on how America in unity will seek for a progress on how to improve things for African-Americans too. Um, let me also share a little bit about um, what we are going to be covering today in this webinar and what we want to do is to celebrate the work of Maya Angelou and Amanda Gorman who were able to capture and communicate a long journey toward civil rights, self-identity and sense of unity through their poetry. Um, these incredible women have played a role in shaping and also inspiring us in understanding um, the civil rights movement by becoming powerful voices um, and the way they were able to rewrite all these stories and experiences of African Americans from their own personal experiences um, and the way they view the world and the way they want us to view uh, through their les lenses, the way they want us to understand like the different crises that America has had in recognizing African-Americans. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Maja Angelou. Um, this is one of my uh, favorite poets and writers of all times. And the reason why is because um, Maya Angelou is a very talented woman um, she actually had a really vast um, career in her life uh, because not only was she a poet and a storyteller, activist, and autobiographer writer, but she also was able to um, be a composer. She also was an actress herself. Um, she also did some Hollywood uh Hollywood movie has a director. Um, she also wrote essays. Um, she was an editor, a playwright, um, and she's well known for having all these different facets in her life. And she was able to portray all her experiences in all these areas um, of, of, of her work um, as a professional. But what I love more about her is that she was, um, she was very involved as a civil rights activist at a, at a very young age, um, early in the 50s. Um, she also became later an educator and it's 
just wonderful to have a woman, a bright woman like her, being an educator and being involved in the education of a lot of young Americans. Um, Amaya Angelou was uh, worldwide recognized by her work, particularly her poetry, uh, because through her poetry, she served um, as a figure of change. Um, she also gave a voice to the voiceless. Um, she addresses topic of women, uh, self-identity, and what it is, you know, to be a person of color uh, in today's uh, U.S. society. Um, but she also, um, more than just depicting and embracing um, the dark story or the dark side of African American history, she was also able to bring and give everyone hope um, by lifting the human spirit through her work. And she was very clear uh, with her sense of humor whenever um, she wrote something, you will feel the pain in her writing, like you could live these stories through her, but also you were able to um, being um, able to connect with her and connect with the with the hope that she tried to um, to give everyone. Amanda Gorman has um, a long trajectory um, in writing and producing um, soulful uh, pieces of art, and she has countless um, essays. She has. Um, countless pieces of, of, of written um, and very expressive uh, work of her. But I will say that the ones that always touched the world um, were uh, her first um, book called I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, also her collection of poetry and Still I Rise, uh, just as well as On the Pulse of Morning, um, and then the heart of a woman. Um, then she has a writer, she was well recognized in the state um, and therefore she received a lot of awards for her work. Um, for instance, in 2012, um, she was awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Bill Clinton. Um, then in 2010, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom which is the highest a civilian honor in the US um, by President Barack Obama. And she was basically um, awarded over 50 different honorary degrees before uh, she was uh, she passed away. Um, I'm going to share right now uh, one of her poems. I hope you guys enjoy it and you just like feel it as much as I feel it. Still I Rise by Maja Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trot me in the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you bested with gloom? Cause I walk like I, I have got wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Do you want to see me broken, bow head and lower eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my sussiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I have got mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I have got diamonds at the meeting of my tides? Out of the hearts of history's shames I rise, up from a past that rooted in pain I rise. I'm black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bird in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terrors and fears, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave and 
I'm the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Um, as you can um, experience through Maya Angelou's uh, poem, you're able to feel the pain, but also the hope. Um, and just how in a beautiful way she turns something painful into something shining and beautiful and full of hope. Um, that's what um, And Still I Rise um, it's about. It's about accepting yourself, not accepting less than what you deserved and always, you know, like look ahead of the future and be proud of who you are and the way you are is what matters in this world. And this is the legacy that Maya Angelou gives to younger generations of writers like Amanda Gorman would be like these young boys that may continue with the legacy of Maya Angelou and such, a, such and such at a young age she's been able to demonstrate all of that um, so let's let's talk a little bit about Amanda Gorman I'm very excited to talk about her um, there we have her right uh, she became a boom uh, not only in this state but also uh, worldwide because um, after she declaimed her famous poems um, her, her famous poem, sorry, um, the climb, uh, sorry, the hill we climb. Um, everyone know this young girl and I'm really amazed by all of the work that she has done and all of the work that she has really published. Um, as a poet, she, her voice is so fresh, so natural and unique, uh, just like Maya Angelou. And you will definitely be and feel identified with this with this girl because here is she um given the same message as maya angelou it's about creating a unity not just for african americans but for the entire america um country because she wants to make sure that she is a voice not only for African Americans, but also for any minority or anyone who feels voice that, that feels unrepresented. And the fact that at a young age, she's caring a lot about like, what's the future of these states? Like, where are we heading into um, the topic of human rights and politics and identity, right? And also recognizing the work of um, the minority voices and those who are un underrepresented. So here we have Amanda Gorman. Um, just like I said, you know, she's a very young girl. She's only 23. Um, and she became famous, right? Because um, she declaimed um, this famous um, poem, uh, The Last, 2021st uh, presidential inauguration um, in the state for President uh, Joe Biden. And she shaked, um, sorry, she shook the world with her powerful uh, verses. Um, and everyone, I think there couldn't be a better person uh, to do this um, because her poem just like fit everything the state has faced recently with the pandemic, with the social crisis that he has um, taken place um, recently. So again, she comes here and tries to give hopes to everyone, um, to calling everyone to work together, to make the country face a better progress, to be better themselves and to make a better place were uh, a better country for all Americans. Um, Amanda Gorman, um, she's a very talented woman, but also um, I think it's very important to mention that she recently graduated um, from with a so sociology degree um, at Harvard University. And she has been writing a lot. Um, she has had a lot of projects. I think her vision is to reach out to young people um, so they become more aware and more involved in what actually matters right now in the States. Um, I'm going to share about some of the work that she has already written. Um, those are 
move forward. Um, one of her first book, right, that uh, most people know about is The Hill We Climb. Um, and the other is her um, book of poetry called Call Us What We Carry. Um, and then she also wrote something for children called Change Sings. Um, and I can see that she's going to have a bright future that we will have her poetry being analyzed and studied in, in high schools, um, in universities and libraries, because she's definitely that freshness that the United States poetry needs right now. Um, and she's continuing the legacy of a lot of African Americans, and I will say particularly Maya Angelou, since there are a lot of similarities drawn between these two great artists and writers. Um, I'm going to share now about um, that I'm going to declaim actually that, that, that famous poem that she did um, a year ago, right, when um, she wrote this poem for America and for their souls and as a way to identify herself as being part of a great country that cares about values, that cares about human rights, and that cares about identity. The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. When the day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find the light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We braided the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the down is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. So somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself residing for one. And yes, we're far from polished, far from pristine. But what does it mean we're striving to form a union that is perfect? We're striving to forge a union with purpose. To compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We, we must first put our difference aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the glow, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. And that we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we'll never again sow the vision. Scriptures tell us to envision that everyone shall seed under the own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we were to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the breaches we have made. That is the promise to glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. It's because being American isn't more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we stepped into and how we repair it. We have seen a force that will shatter our nation rather than share it. We'll destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we trust for a while we have our eyes on future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We fear at its inception. 
We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within, if we found the power to author a new chapter to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we ask, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold, fierce, and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation, because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation, become the future. Our blunders become their burdens, but one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left. Every breath from my frozen pounded chest will rise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the golden hills of the west. We will rise from the white sweat northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake green cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sand baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner call our country, our people diverse and beautiful, will merge butter and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. The new down balloons has we freed. For they're always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. So this is the hill we climbed by Amanda Gorman. And if you want to be delighted by her beautiful voice of uh, reciting this beautiful poem, um, there is a link that we have shared with you where you can actually see her reciting um, this beautiful poem. I can never get over it. Like I listened to it like so many times because this it's just one of those poems that really got into my soul and that transformed, transported me to a beautiful place um, that all countries should enjoy, enjoy of unity and the sense of belonging and being aware that you can be part of a change with your attitude and with your actions. Um, I want to thank Centro Cultural Nicaragüense Norte Americano for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to speak in this space and for promoting um, African American culture which in my opinion, um, it's something that we should celebrate not just once a month, but in daily basis by learning more about the heritage, the history, and all the great contributions that a lot of African American has done, not only for the United States of America, but also to the entire world. Thank you, and I hope you have a nice evening today. I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back no I will go I shall go to see what the end is gonna be